as the stone increases, there is a higher chances of hemorrhage, pancreatitis, as well as perforation. And when we are using mechanical lithotripsy, there is a, always a problem of broken basket, traction wire fracture, as well as the broken handles. When the things time develop, the visualization system improves, and we can here see that cholangioscope has come with a great boon for the ERCP. But when we see on the other side, since decades, we have the cholidocoscope, bronchoscope, uretroscope. This can be easily accessed the common bile duct and achieve a much better stone clearance rate. So the principle over behind any successful is the direct visualization and the stone clearance, which is a directly proportional to decrease the need of repeated procedure as well as avoid of any adverse effect. Do we have a comparison between these two procedures? Yes, there is a one trial for that. Let me bring you to the first the concepts of laparoscopic CBD exploration. Generally, it is with much more defined criteria whenever we have a multiple stones and the duct diameter is beyond 7 mm and the suturing ability is a good, you can post this patient for laparoscopic common bile duct exploration, provided that the patient is not in a uh, acute phase of cholangitis and the uh, surgeon is having the superior skill for the advanced laparoscopy. Uh, this is the video I'm just sharing you that this patient was presented with uh, uh, acute cholecystitis uh, with a CT scan and the imaging is favoring of uh, common bile duct stones. Although this video is not about the uh, uh, large impacted stone, but the beauty over here is that the same procedure we can convert in a single stage operation where we can see the cystic duct is much more defined. This was the acute cholecystitic with CBD stones. And then the lower CBD was stressed. One may can do a cholangiogram and rule out the stones. As the time has evolved, the visualization system has also evolved. We can expose the lower CBD, make a puncture, develop, delivered out the small stones. And through cholidocoscope or rigid uretroscope, you can nicely visualize lower CBD as well as the proximal CBD. We can see even the right and left ductal confluence. Once we are sure under direct visualization that there is a no stone, either you can close without putting a stent or a T-tube. Or sometimes you can put an anti-grade biliary stent that will obviate unnecessary placement of T-tube placement. So what was the concern? The mainly concerns which highlights in uh, all randomized trial or any meta-analysis is the bile leak. And various studies have reported between 2 to 10 percent of incidence. Obviously, there are certain factors which decide bile leak, like the method of CBD closures, whether concomitant CBD stricture has been addressed or any missed out stone is or not. When you do all these procedures under direct visualization, you can reduce the bile leak by less than 2%. In fact, you have opened the bile duct, so it's anyway the bile is going to come. But hardly because of the bile leak, whether we require any secondary intervention is very less. Regarding CBD strictures, the incidence are 0.9%. That will directly depend upon the size of CBD. When we are talking about impacted CBD stone, obviously there will be a large diameter of CBD. So very less chance that CBD will be strictured. Missed out stone incidence is 3.5. That can be decreased by direct cholangioscopy. And in fact, if you feel that, then obviously the post-operative ERCP would help you out with that. When we see the comparative studies, there is a one study which has directly compared a spyglass versus laparoscopic common bile duct stone. And they, these studies has beautifully highlighted the overall complication. If you see in a group A, that is a cholangioscopy with a laser lithotripsy, obviously the complication risks are low. And the, when we see on the lab CBD uh, uh, exploration, the complication rates are 10 percentage, hemorrhage is 2, and the bile leakage is 2. But between these two, it shows that it is a non-inferior trial. But when we see, read in between the line, you will see the re-intervention was required in a 16 percentage of patients because they are the large stone. In a single sitting, it is very difficult to take out the, all the stones. Conversion to surgery. There is a many a time when the 
twice attempt of uh, laser lithotripsy has not succeeded. So they have asked them for their surgeon colleague to go for the laparoscopic surgery. What, what about the cost effective analysis? What is associated morbidities like prolonged operative hours, cholangitis? If somebody has the exposure of large impacted stone and breaking through cholangioscopy laser lithotripsy, it's like having a basmati rice with a chopsticks. It's a lot of prolonged morbidity. Where in the other hand, if you see the morbidity of laparoscopic common bile duct exploration, it's largely depend upon the method of CBD closure. If you have not closed properly, and it's directly, the, it is a T-tube related complication. If you want to obviate all these complication, you can always put an endobiliary stent and close the bile duct over it. So the point is, if you have a right tool, then you should know the right execution. And the based on that, the fact is that accept the situation. These are the difficult stones. Many center does not have very advanced equipment and equipment need a superior skill. You just cannot uh, bring a equipment and start doing in all difficult uh, cases. Large population has a limited financial pool and resources. So the objective over here should be the stone clearance and recurring cost. So give your best shot. The key factor for preventing complication is to match the indication and the contraindication of each approach. And I would firmly believe that it should be a patient-centric approach rather than what procedure or what product you have. So the, my argument for this laparoscopic common bile duct exploration is it should be benefit for the patient. Why benefit? Because it's a one-stop shopping. It's a cost-effective and shorter total hospitalization. It's a safe and effective, proven over a period of decades. Does not have to visit a frequent endobiliary intervention. For a surgeon, it is a simplified. Its skill sets improves and continuity of the care. What the patient needs is a confidence buildup among the doctor-patient relationship. And for the healthcare system, it's a fewer procedures and decrease the frequent need of transfer. So my conclusion is that the lab CBD exploration is a better for the patient whom the standard ERCP failure is anticipated except in a severe cholangitis or pancreatitis that I would prefer to put an endoscopic uh, sphincterotomy and the, put the endobiliary drainage. Lab CBD is a most versatile, cost-effective, reproducible. Obviously, it requires more advanced skill. Post-ERCP is almost always a reasonable alternative. So in my view, lab CBD should be considered as a first-line treatment in a large impacted CBD stone. Thank you very much again. And... Uh, to my colleagues, we are just phone call away. Thank you. Sir, Neelay, sir, any answer to... No, 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 uh, sir. Uh, we'll ask them to come on stage. Okay. Chair, kar do na, please. Anand and Dr. Neelay, sir, please take your seats. Sir, uh, sir, we'll give you a mic there, sir. There he is. So, uh, there are total 160 online attendees also with us. And they, I request all virtual colleagues to please post their questions in the chat box. So the moderators can help you to know your answers. So all virtual colleagues, please post your questions on the chat box. So, so you, you are agree me. with the last line of Dr. Anand that it's large impacted CBD stone lab CBD exploration direct option? No, I don't think so. In fact, he only showed that it should not be done. Uh, if you say that the paper he presented, which was published in 2021, uh, if you see numerically, the side effects were more in the lab CBD uh, exploration, even though they were must not have been statistically significant. But if you see the set of complications, they are different. And uh, biliary leak, bile duct stricture uh, would require re-intervention. So even though you say that uh, ERCP means spyglass and uh, ERCP failed and then surgical intervention was required in 7%, uh, 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 they are not talking about re-intervention, means other form of intervention when you have complication, number one. Uh, number two, uh, uh, many a times we know that uh, lab CBD, yes, it's a great option. I wouldn't say, and I have nothing against it. In fact, I would send my patients to a surgeon uh, in a, in a patient where it is indicated. But uh, a blanket statement saying that when a standard ERCP fails, lab, lab CBD exploration should be done, I don't agree with that. Uh, very nice talk, Dr. Anand. Mm -hmm. So it is not always surgeon rescue us. We also sometimes rescue surgeon. 
So what is your opinion about a remnant cystic duct stone? Would you post that patient for surgery again or would you refer for a... Uh, thank you very much and uh, there is uh, be because I am sitting among the largely upon uh, uh, this is a physicians but I am very happy that I have been backed by a surgeons so uh, regarding your questions uh, will you post a cystic duct patient for laparoscopy or you will post for endoscopy uh, I have a very limited experience in endoscopic cystic duct retrieval I have done couple of cystic stone, uh, stone uh, removal through laparoscopy if I do a imaging and I feel confident that these stones are within the vicinity nearby the CBDs and my endoscopies can approach, then I will give for them ERCP. Or at least I will ask them you try first attempt because going back directly to laparoscopy, it's not easy. Uh, that surgical field be full of additions. So in my personal thought, I will always ask my colleague first whether you can remove through ERCP, you try or attempt, or at least you put a uh, endobiliary stand. If he's not able to succeed, then with this backup, I'll go inside and remove the cystic duct. I might have to open the CBD also, but I'm very confident that I can suture it back since already the stand in C. This would be my approach. No, I, I think what he is saying is it does make a sense. So basically, the idea of debate should not be like fighting. It's just showing or uh, physician's perspective and surgeon's perspective and then reach a conclusion. I think the conclusion has already been there that if you have a large CBD stone, you don't go for surgery straight away. Yes, in certain situations, you go for surgery straight away. You have three large stones, four large stones, take one after the other. You don't do endoscopy and do laser lithotripsy for two hours and do second sitting and then third sitting. Uh, then a surgeon is a better hand in this situation. But if there is a large one stone or one large stone, two, three small stones, you don't go for surgery straight away. Then you do endoscopy. Uh, because endoscopy is, I, I wouldn't say cheaper. Of course, it is cheaper uh, because now even laparoscopy is not cheaper. It's quite expensive. So compared to that endoscopy, in spite of the instrument cost is higher than the surgical instruments, endoscopy is still cheaper for this large CBD stone. So I would just give a chance to endoscope it. Most of the times that will solve the problem. Uh, but as Dr. Mahesh Gonka very elaborately said, two situations where I would not venture, one is large stacked up stones, or even sometimes uh, stones are uh, in a uh, uh, difficult, so they are difficult, what he discussed. But otherwise, first is endoscopy. Uh, second question to uh, So, what is uh, your opinion about um, CBD stone in surgically altered anatomy? So, so it's a difficult situation for endoscopist also. I, yeah. So, what we do is uh, endolepro uh, combination uh, for post pediatric. Uh, in Ruen Y, uh, we do post bariatric. Uh, that's much cheap, uh, cheaper, uh, much easier. Uh, surgeon gives access uh, to the remnant stomach, and then we do normal ERCP from that. Of course, there are age procedures, but they are very expensive because one stent uh, would be one lakh fifty thousand, uh, and then a closure is also an another uh, expensive thing. Uh, compared to that, laparoendoscopy comes out to be much easier also. Uh, in other surgically altered anatomy, if it is post vepal I would just go with pediatric uh, colonoscope because very easy to reach. Uh, if uh, that is not the case, then enteroscopy assisted. Uh, uh, you have single balloon, double balloon, and spiral. We do not we do not have enough experience to suggest spiral enteroscopy in all cases of surgically altered anatomy. But you can try. But standard of care right now is uh, 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 double balloon endoscopy. And of course, you can do EUS guided. If there are small stones into the bile duct, you can always puncture the left lobe of the liver. And it's easy. It's much easier procedure than what you think. Just puncture, put a wire, go across the wire, go into the jejunum and then just dilate with a balloon. Ampulla has to be dilated with a balloon and then just push the stones with a balloon, stone extraction balloon 
uh, into the uh, 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 jejunum out out of the bile duct. So these are the available options. Yeah, one question from audience: Can we do balloon dilatation with 15 mm uh, CRE balloon if CBD is 10 mm diameter? Uh, I don't think so. You should be doing it. Uh, you should not go too much beyond what your CBD diameter is. See, the biggest misconception is that you can dilate the CBD uh, with a balloon dilatation. That is a misconception. By balloon dilation, what you are doing is you are just dilating the ampullary muscles. So you are not doing anything to the CBD. Uh, when CBD is 10 and if you are doing dilatation with 15, there are chances of complication. I've seen uh, and a patient have come to me with CBD perforation. Uh, so uh, that's not a wise idea. And don't think that you are doing a CBD dilatation. You are doing an ampullary dilation. Any question from audience? Anybody? Good morning. This is Bowman Vanya. Sorry, Anand, but uh, being a surgeon, sorry, I'm not supporting you. I've been in practice for the last 25 years. But since last five years, I have not done a single laparoscopic or an open CBD exploration in Ahmedabad. Our gastroenterologist friends, they have become so competent. So there has not been a single need. And the other thing regarding these large stones, we don't see them anymore. We used to see them a lot earlier. But these large stones, these 15 mm stones, these 20 mm stones, we don't see them earlier. Patients tend to come earlier with better ultrasound and better sonologists available. Frankly, these patients have reduced remarkably. And they have, frankly have not done, though I do a large number of polycystectomies, but not done a single CBD exploration. And, uh, better diagnostic, this group of the patients are coming very, very early. What my point I want to highlight, I have done a couple of cases of laparoscopic CBD exploration with a T-tube in a C2. I have myself decided that when the ERCP is available, I'll not approach because obviously it is carrying the morbidity. What is my point over here is when you are obviously getting a large CBD stone where the patient is going to undergo repeated biliary intervention, ask your medical colleague that if he is not able to remove the large biliary stone, put at least a sphincterotomy and endobiliary stent. Yes. When we go for the surgery, that. it will drastically will reduce the morbidity. This is my approach. I have done this surgery seven years before. Most of the stones comes like that and I ask my colleague's friend, they will say we have removed it. No problem. But for a Mirzi syndrome, for this kind of the bigger stone, I feel that they should go first endoscopy, try and attempt. If they are not successful, put the biliary stand inside. So during the surgery, it will, lot of it will help us a lot and it will reduce the morbid. So it should be the joint rather than verdicting that you should always do these things. I feel strongly. First attempt fail, you have always an option of lab CBD exploration. That is what my point is. Sir, to conclude the session, I just want to say one thing. Maybe in last six months and for last one year, in civil hospital in our unit, we have explored CBD maybe around 15 cases. Maybe this is, these are the cases who have failed ERCP for two to three times. But what I am saying, if you are saying in last five years, it is not seen, but we have done it after failed, failed ERCP for two to three times. So it is an indication. Maybe patients are not affording for spyglass or like that. That's why. But it is a, it has a role and it should be done and it is a very safe protein. Ah. Yeah. That is a, that is a uh, written thing. So, it is a decreasing. Uh, uh, Bauman, let me, let me answer your question. I don't think that shows that the procedure is inferior. It is the onus of responsibility on the surgeons. Just because they are not doing lab CBD does not mean the procedure is inferior. If you go into the literature last 25 years and look head-on-head -head comparison, endotherapy versus one-time laparoscopic CBD, the morbidity and mortality is the same. Because here you have to combine two procedures, ERCP with lab coli and on the other side it is just one procedure, lab coli, lab CBD. Morbidity and mortality is the same. The problem is not too much of skills is needed. 
Anand, because suturing today, everybody can do it. But the problem is the armamentarium. Most of the surgical OTs don't have great IITVs. They don't have these technical prop, you know, putting in balloons, uh, small CBDs to go transistic, this kind of. So that's what these kind of expertise has not developed. So it is the responsibilities on the surgeon. I don't think the procedures should be blamed for that. Okay, now the problem that we face, ERCP is the commonest procedure done for CBD stones. And today we are significantly still, even today we are facing the problem of pancreatitis. In spite of all prevention efforts, endomethacin, this, that, other, pancreatic stain, everything we're doing, but still we face pancreatitis as a significant problem. And we have been struggling to find a, you know, uh, recently we have had a series of patients. One of the patients actually we had a mortality after post ERCP pancreatitis. And this patient did not even have a lab coli, could not reach a lab coli. And this patient had in the hospital for 60 days, very bad necrotizing pancreatitis. It's a big problem. It's not something that we can hide over. And that's why I think I'm looking for options. One of the options that I uh, discussed with Dr. VK Mishra in Kanpur, what he does is they do a intraoperative ERCP. The surgeon during a lab coli put his, puts a guide wire from the cystic duct into the papilla. And then the ERCP person comes and then does a... So there is no pancreatic cannulation, just to avoid a pancreatic duct cannulation. So these are some of the novel ways how we can both club together and reduce the risk of pancreatitis. I think that should be uh, one of the ways we should be thinking about. Thank you, Dr. Anand. Thank you, Dr. Nile. Just conclude the session and proceed toward the next stage. To, to Dr. Nile Mehta and Dr. Bhavesh Thakur will present a moment to, to Dr. Anand Patel. To OT, uh, Dr. Samir, can you uh, hear us? Dr. Samir? Yes, yes. Now we will start a live case. Uh, impacted large biliary calculi, intrahepatic calculi. The case will, will be conducted by Dr. Mukesh Kala, sir, who is senior gastroenterologist, SR Kala Gastro Hospital, Jaipur, and Dr. Saumin Shah, sir, who is gastroenterologist, Gujarat Gastro Hospital, Surat. Uh, host. Excuse me. Payal, please invite moderators for this session. Case one, uh, Mr. Just a minute, Dr. Kiran, wait, wait for a minute. I will ask you to start. Yeah, for this session, we have in moderators Dr. Vishme Joshipura, Dr. Sashank Desai, Dr. Suresh Hirane, and Dr. Jayesh Parikh. Dr. Kiran, please once the moderators take their chairs you please start history when they will ask you to start body to him karna Hello. Good morning, everybody. And uh, now we are starting with the live workshop. And uh, Dr. Mukesh Kalla is here to demonstrate us the procedure for the impacted uh, large biliary calculi. Uh, Dr. Kalla is from uh, Jaipur and he is uh, working at uh, SR Kalla Gastro Hospital. Dr. Kalla. Yes. Am I, are we visible that side? Visible, audible, beautiful. Okay. So, I mean, uh, me and Somil, we have started this case. Somil has removed the stents which were placed earlier. And we did a cholangiogram. The lower CBD is very narrow and that, uh, as Dr. Goenka had mentioned in his uh, talk, 
that this is a difficult stone for two reasons. One is it looks like a mirizi because the stone is in cystic duct and the lower CBD is very narrow. So this is a perfect case for uh, using a cholangioscope. Our intention of learning here is to uh, locate the stone, see if we can retrieve it by a spy basket, we'll do that first. And if we think that we cannot do that, then we will utilize Hello. a laser because Hello. a small stone will be able to, I mean, fragment this stone with a little effort. So before we start this case, I would like to introduce this cholangioscope to all the people here. This is a milestone technology in my opinion because uh, th this is really changing the scenario how we look at it. My personal perception is that if the hepatobiliary anatomy permits, there is no stone which would probably go to a surgeon's table. Most of the stones we should be able to manage with cholangioscopy, laser, oblique, EHL. The learning curve on this equipment is not great. Anybody who is well versed with ERCP can easily start doing a cholangioscopy procedure. The aim here is to understand this scope uh, very carefully because this is an expensive technology and if we are very careful while using this equipment and if we can save this equipment and we can use it four or five times then it becomes a cost effective uh, procedure. You will all appreciate that a CBD exploration in any of these setup would <coughs> probably cost 50-60 thousand rupees at least that happens in Rajasthan. Gujarat is a rich state. And I think the same for the same charges without cutting open the abdomen, we can retrieve most of the stones possible. So this is the uh, cholangioscope. This is a 260 centimeters long catheter. And this catheter has up, down and right, left movement. And then this has a working channel, which is 1.2 millimeters in size. And uh, the company provides us with a three-way cannula here. So this is the three-way, uh, uh, I mean, adapter. So we'll fix this adapter here. The intention of putting this adapter here is that this is a screw here. We will push our uh, laser fiber or EHL fiber through this port and fix it there. And this port can be utilized for uh, aspiration or sucking. And then uh, these are the knobs. And beyond this, there are two small tubes which are provided. We have to understand that uh, either uh, whether you are using a EHL or whether you are using a laser lithotripsy, there is heat generation there which happens nearer to the stone. So you need to cool it down and the maximum energy which will happen will be underwater only. So there will be a constant flush of normal saline while we are uh, uh, fragmenting the stone. So this port, this the blue one, this port is the irrigation port and another major equipment which should be there with this particular uh, equipment is an irrigation pump. So we will be using this irrigation pump intermittently to I mean keep the CBD flushed and keep the laser fiber under water and only make sure that you fire this uh, I mean uh, laser or EHL only under water. Otherwise there will be loss of the fiber and uh, you lose this expensive uh, equipment. And this another thing with that uh, connector here is a suction catheter which you can utilize in between. Now laser fiber comes with a length of 4 meters which is like 400 centimeters almost like 150 centimeters more than the size of the scope. Our intention will be to save uh, this light uh, sky blue part of the equipment because this sky blue part of the equipment is a part which is the most vulnerable to damage. It is the bending section. We have all learned that the bending section is the most precious part of any uh, GI endoscope. Same holds true for this scope as well. So we will start. So we will change the position. Somil will help me. Another thing which I wanted to share with you that uh, Classically in uh, West they call it, call it as a single operator cholangioscope, yes we can use it, that's not a problem at all. Using this we can fix it on the uh, handle of the equip our ERCP scope and we can use both the things. But unlike West, our here, me and Sumil, we are happy doing this procedure together where there is no financial burden on it. So I normally prefer in my unit that uh, we two people work together, either it can be my fellow gastroenterologist or a well trained uh, uh, I mean uh, technician is also of great help. So let us first uh, go inside, look, visualize the stone and when the need comes for laser lithotripsy we will talk about that as well. So uh, this patient had two uh, strands, so left little yeah, agilia, left little yeah. This patient had uh, two CBD strands inside which we have removed. There is a reasonable amount of sphincterotomy done. We did a cholangiogram. This cholangiogram shows that this patient has, this patient has a, a dilated cystic duct 
and uh, within this dilated cystic duct we have a small stone which we are able to see and which is compressing the common hepatic duct so probably post cholecystectomy retained cystic duct stone we can call it type 1 merisi as well so the sphincterotomy is adequate but if we were dealing with a stone which was like 2 cm or 2.5 cm or a larger stone i would probably prefer doing a sphincteroplasty here the intention of doing a sphincteroplasty is to uh, ease of taking out the fragmented stones one and to protect the bending section of our scope as well so the best thing is that the light blue the sky blue thing should be dealt with as less as possible if you want to preserve the scope so that is what i was trying to tell you if you have a sphincteroplasty the insertion is easy but if you don't have the sphincteroplasty then intermittently you will have to use the elevator to push the cholangioscope inside few people also place a guide wire inside the uh, common bile duct and over the wire they are pushing the uh, cholangioscope which can also be <coughs> done the cholangiogram which me and somil had taken was showing that the lower cbd is extremely narrow so i will try getting inside if i am not able to do it then probably i might use the wire technique this miss guide wire dal lo isme se dal do isme se guide wire dal would you like to change anything yeah, yeah. i am any... there i am there i am there yes sir would you like to change any uh, technique if the, there is any peri no no i am already inside ek baar cholangiogram dikha na cm cm so sir is inside so now putting a plant or putting a wire maybe we can uh, avoid right yeah, now yeah we can defer that idea we just see the visualize the bile duct and then we will decide pani wala irrigation kidhar hai your question is to change a technique for intubation you now see the my intention was telling you that we should have a good sphincteroplasty and a wide open ampulla because i don't want to put any pressure on the bending section we did struggle a little bit at the ampulla and i had to use uh, the elevator since i had to use the elevator so which is this is what i don't want so if possible you should always try to have a sphincteroplasty when you are dealing with a big stone but anyhow let's concentrate on the spy picture it's almost like doing upper gi endoscopy and we are there in the cystic duct luckily and you can see the mark there we'll keep going in my one cm bhi dikhate rehna cm so i'll do a, a proper inspection of the tum usko ghuma lo jaise apna okay, okay, just okay, keep okay, done right so the, uh, there the stone there is a small uh, culprit which was coming down at the junction of cystic duct cvd spice uh, yeah. it looks like a uh, small stone i don't think we need uh, uh, to deal with this stone with uh, laser yeah, at laser. all you basket we can use basket which will be a demonstration for the use of basket one and uh, we can do laser for uh, more patient dr yogesh told me that they have one large 2.5 cm stone as well see am dekho so we just insert a basket sir ha dal okay give me a basket spy basket yes. दिखाओ लो घुमाओ घुमाओ ये मुकेश हां पानी डाल पानी डालेंगे थोड़ा सा सो दिस पेशेंट हैड टू स्टेंट्स प्लेस्ड 
earlier. So, uh, some amount of induration and fibrosis you can see here. This small hole is probably I presume, let me check, might be cystic duct. Let us go in and see. Why, why dal ke dekhe? Why? I think cystic mein to sir amara. Ja ke aapan aa gaya. I think this may be a, some uh, second generation duct or I think. Haan, bich mein ho. This is the common bile duct, bich mein ho. I think we, so, now, this is the cystic duct CBD uh, junction. On the right side you saw the cystic duct opening the small stone which was floating in and out of the cystic duct and on the left side was the plain lumen of the common bile duct. Bismillah. So, this is the culprit stone dalo, basket dalo or pakarlo. Center mein rakhon. Haan, center mein rakhon. This is the stone. Haan, this is the stone. Why this stone did not come out by itself? What do you think? No, I think it was floating and uh, I mean I am told that Yogesh had done a procedure uh, few days back that time uh, he had placed in a stand. Might co quite possible that this stone had migrated that time only or maybe now because of the suction. But before we come out, after removing this stone, we will go in the cystic duct and ensure that there is no other stone remaining other than this. So, whatever we are seeing will be kind of a demo for uh, the uh, ba retrieval. I have to lose it. Yeah. Ah. And then they will ah. go inside. <coughs> Love. I, it is going? And now, now you. Now I am again focusing. Now, there is a small problem which is a troubleshooting here. Uh, there ba I mean, Somila has passed on a spy basket inside. This basket was not going and it was getting stuck. So, what I did, I went in. Straighten the scope so that it does not get into the curve, it does not get engulfed in the curve. It is all in your hand now. Open. Basket full. Sir, thoda irrigation. Karing. So, Somal is doing this case for us. He will hold. Close, close, close. Let us see. Flush. Irrigation. Close, close, close. Migrate. We have to go more deeper. Yes. yes. Uh, open now. There. Close. We go inside, sir. Yes. These small movements of uh, if you have to travel straight in the common bile duct instead of using the shaft of the scope, my suggestion would be to use up and down okay. knob and to move we in and out. Open. I think we do not have enough space to go beyond. So, let us go beyond this and then we will come back and on way back we will get it out. Okay, we'll close, close, close. Then we will again. Chal. No. So, what I am doing, I am not holding the shaft at all, I am just using the up and down knob. This is very interesting because, uh, up job. Open. Ah, now, now open. Ah, up, up. With ziggling movement, I think you should get it. Ah, pakarlo. Pakarlo, 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 pakarlo. Now it is. Yes. Yeah, Somil has done a great job and uh, now I will just bring the cholangioscope out. Just get rid of this stone first. We just get rid of this stone first. I am not sure whether you people have seen the lower CBD. Have you seen the lower CBD? So, that is the stone. Mm. Yes. Sometimes patient relative asking where, where is stone. So, you can Shoulder. give them. So, this uh, the. Uh, basket nikal. Basket nikal. Basket nikal. Okay, apna kaam. Guide basket. Dalo, cystic duct ke Haan. Or we will see the cystic duct and then we finish the case. Okay. So, Dr. Kala, always you use a wire uh, once you come out. Suppose if you come out, you have cleared a stone yes. out of PD. Again, for introduction of no, this no, no, pie, no, no. you will use a wire? No, no, I do not want to use the wire at all. I okay. mean, I want to I mean, uh, preserve this scope for a long time. 
ओके 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 इसको ठीक सो सो यू विल यूज अ वायर राइट या माय वी हैव लाइक पब्लिशिंग स्टडी वेयर वी आर इंसिस्टिंग दैट बेलून स्फिंगप्रोप्लास्टी फॉर अ कोलेंजियोस्कोपी पेशेंट इज मैंडेटरी फॉर थ्री गुड रीजंस वन इज यू नीड टू सेव द स्कोप व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस द रिट्रीवल ऑफ द फ्रेगमेंटेड स्टोन्स बिकम्स वेरी इजी and the third thing is that uh, multiple passages in and out there won't be any struggle at the ampulla isko theek karo ulam inko bolna so my original question was first yes. question was that would you change some uh, technique or would you do some additional maneuver if there is any periampullary diverticulum periampullary diverticulum so see i mean as we are using a normal uh, even you, when we do a normal cholangioscopy normal ercp and we know that periampullary diverticular ah, erp is a difficult erp so uh, here uh, for that particular situation i would probably advise to keep a wire in and over the wire we can introduce the scope now you see the first One. time we had some problem but now there is no problem at all now the passage is easy because our scope was inside for like wire, last wire. 10 minutes and it is already now ab now we have to now our intention is we will go first go beyond the hilum go right and left ensure that everything is okay then locate the cystic duct then somil will probably pass on the guide wire under vision into the cyst duct cystic duct we go see inspect the cystic duct and then we come out so having uh, done a pan uh, uh, cbd inspection then we are pretty sure that uh, the job is done so we can come even without a stent inside so the first thing uh, center mein rakhna the first thing we are going to inspect the common bile duct ne abhi wire thodi bahar le le means bahar ma matlab not ha apne taraf na because first let's go to the hilum see the hilum come back see the cystic duct and then uh, enter in the cystic duct that's our aim right now uh oh aa ja ja chal dr kala yes sir dr jayesh parik here there is one question from audience yes in case of a fail ercp okay. or large impacted stone correct but what is the ideal time in which lab open cbd exploration should be done wonderful so uh, this workshop today is about cholangioscopy the nearest uh, competitor for uh, cholangioscopy is laparoscopic cbd exploration i wish that uh, i mean uh, the results when you visit the data lab cholangios lab cbd exploration scores over cholangioscopy because okay. what it is doing it is managing both the thing at one go it is getting the gallbladder removed and the cbd exploration is done as well but unfortunately uh, lab cbd exploration in itself has a deep learning curve the expertise is more and the time consumed is more so but vis a vis if you have a laparoscopic uh, surgeon then it is a institutional choice which methodology you want to use but for a impacted stone which is a ercp failure cholangioscopy is a easy procedure to do which would probably take 35 to 45 minutes to get rid of the uh, uh, stone out okay ek baar cholang why done so uh, my question is have you came across about the impacted uh, cbd stone yeah, yeah, Impact that is stuck up with the mucosa ha ha this is a floating stone but if it is impacted at the mucosa impacted stone impacted stone you mean a large Means stone adhere, adherent to the cbd mucosa oh you mean it is a kind of a diverticula in which the stone is uh, and uh, yeah. correct not should not be problem if you are using a cholangioscope because when you are having a cholangioscope then everything is in your vision very good ha huh. okay mujhe wo dekhna padega ek baar na mera scope kis taraf ho ja raha hai possible that we are inside the cystic duct at the end of the cystic duct ah, yes sir like it, it, yes it seems that you are in so, the cystic duct yeah lo beech mein lo beech mein lo so so the, this is the end of the cystic duct because we are against the wall now we did a cholangiogram the stone was here cystic duct was dilated now there is no stone in the cystic duct gradually we will come out gradually we will come out so there is the cystic duct opening and uh, we fall into the common bile duct then which appears clear and we me and uh, somil we will uh, somil will help me to go beyond the this time not in the cystic duct but above in the common bile duct chalo uh, chalo very nice uh, demonstration ha i would like to have 
your Who's views saying? about uh, is there any change in your uh, procedure or policy or why, selection why based on the angle between cystic duct and the CBD? Yes. See, uh, when you have a lower insertion of the cystic duct, it is easy, but sometimes it can be an acute angulation Pluro, Pluro. which would probably not even permit us for uh, uh, passing the cholangioscope also. We can do a stenting, we can do a stenting. Uh, this is a stick duct, I agree. Yeah. This is a stick duct, we'll go this, this side. Why Nicole, either dal. So if there is acute angulation of the cystic duct, common bile duct junction, even cholangioscopy would fail there. And what if there is so much fibrosis near the mouth of the cystic duct? See, fibrosis is, I mean, as long as I said right in the beginning of our uh, case presentation that it is about all about hepatobiliary anatomy. If hepatobiliary anatomy is favorable, then there is nothing which cholangioscope can't do along with the help Hello. of laser lithotripsy or EHL. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mukesh, Dr. Saumin, for nice demonstration of spy scope with uh, removal of uh, cystic duct stone by basket. Now we will switch over to uh, another case. Can we have a history for OT1 case? Hello. Dr. Kiran, please start with the history. Huh. Uh, before that, I would like to request the moderators to please introduce Dr. Naveen. Dr. Naveen. Dr. Naveen is a gastro medical gastroenterologist from Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad and uh, he is going to demonstrate us about the management of intrahepatic calculi. Dr. Naveen? Hello. Hello, Dr. Naveen, would you like to narrate the history of the patient? Hi, good morning and everyone. Can you all hear me? Can I yes, start Yes, we can history? hear you. Yeah, okay. So this is a chap who is 60 year old um, and uh, he's got CBD stones. Uh, I presented with obstructive jaundice two, three months back. He had a ERCP uh, at that time and uh, stent was placed. Uh, he's got a one and a half centimeter stone uh, in a... Sorry, Dr. Naveen, can we have the endoscopy view? Larger yeah. endoscopy view. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. We just started the case. Uh, so essentially, it's this uh, big CBD stone sitting in the mid CBD, um, about 1.2 to 1.5 centimeter stone. Uh, in a duct of about uh, 12 millimeters and the stone appears to be more of a square shaped stone on the cholangiogram that we saw um, so I'm just taking this stent out first and then we'll uh, we'll get in into the bile duct with the cholangioscope so it's Auto an impacted CBD there. stone yeah that's right yeah. it's an impacted CBD stone right yeah pakde. yeah that's right pakde. hold it hold it Okay. I'm just removing the scope, okay? And I just noticed that there is a big diverticulum next to the ampulla. Uh, it's a long stand which was placed. I'm just removing the stand. I tried with the snare first. I generally go with the snare, uh, but because the stand is quite long enough, that's why I couldn't use a snare. So I just switched over to the rat tooth and we just removed the remove the pigtail. I tend to do my ERCPs in the prone positions. I don't know what audience would prefer. Dr. Naveen, yeah. prior to planning your procedure in such situation, what parameters would you specifically look for Thrust and lifter, yeah. take a notice uh, for the specific anatomical or uh, pathological parameters? Yeah. Just give me one minute. Let me just intubate him first again, oh, and then I'll. Not an issue. Doctor Vismith, uh, Doctor Vismith, sir, there might be some questions for previous session in the chat box. Doctor Nilay sir is already here, so uh, he can answer the questions. Yeah. If there are some questions in the chat box. Ha, hai kar sakte? Not able to see very well. No. Hi, oh, there is no question in the chat box, but uh, audience questions are always welcome. Isko thoda, isko 
कैप थोड़ा चेंज कर सकते हैं थोड़ा हवा जा रहा है इट्स लीकिंग अप फ्रॉम हियर सर डॉक्टर नीले सर इज देर एनी पर्टिकुलर साइज इन विच वी वॉन्ट डू कोलेंजोस्कोपियल लिथोट्रिप्सी फॉर स्टोन सीबीडी स्टोन एनी साइज no i don't think size is the hindrance okay but uh, it all depends on the stone and the cbd anatomy okay sir. so any size you can do it but more than 3 cm probably i would say 2.5 3 cm surgeon would be, be having a better job better. because you would require uh, more uh, laser or ehl firing can, and probably two sessions and for surgeon it's buscopan buscopan de sakte hain buscopan and span and sir yeah. Sir, what is your experience on use of cholangoscopy for impacted intrahepatic bleeding? I have not done any intrahepatic impacted stones, but uh, there is uh, one I, question in chat box. Doctor Shrikant Gopi is asked: Is spintroplasty in all cases for sufficient ampullal ampullary opening before cholangoscopy? You can answer. You can answer, sir. You can answer. Yeah, uh, Doctor Nilay Mehta. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so I just had a little comment on the previous uh, question about intrahepatic stones. So you've done it in a few cases. I think uh, these can so be flush challenging. Flush area, yeah. It depends on the anatomy where the stone is. Flush, Which flush. Ultimately, spiscope is excellent with mobility, but then compared to a regular endoscope, the angle of uh, uh, how much angle the spy tip moves is lesser. so sometimes when stones are really at 6 o'clock position in deep sometimes it can be very difficult to but, get access to those yeah, stones but, but, however with some uh, maneuvering and efforts we've been able to successfully achieve it we have we have had about four patients in which we've done it successfully we haven't had to send anyone for surgery but it was more challenging than a standard case see i, I would say if it is intrahepatic stone and Why it is symptomatic Screen not please. Any problem, Screen will, please. May not do anything for intrahepatic stone number one. Number two, surgery Screen. is also not easy. Upper, upper, lagaye. Screen. The best method is percutaneous method. Ah, uh, upper. Uh, it's much easier. Hi, 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 hi. Really do it. Sometimes the intrahepatic stones are there in a segment of the liver. Thoda sa upper dikhaye. Destroyed. That is what I am. Demag kare. Demag. The segmentectomy or the uh, even sometimes the left lobe is totally gone. and there uh, probably you need to take out the segment or the lobe sanjay so, what do contrast kitna de raha light dilute kar raha na contrast uh, dilute hai na diabetic stones yeah. are quite less common in our country uh, in contrast to ek baar screen kariye patients uh, we have seen a few cases uh, why zyada chala gaya niche thoda piche daliye can be accessed uh, by surgery if they are frequent yeah. and you know d mag because i'm getting But, a magnified uh, view i want a d mag Uh, commonly if there is a stricture and there is you know atrophy no, of uh, the no zoom out zoom out abscess out large cholangiolitic abscess then this will require a resection thoda sa niche karenge to aayega na niche kar sakte hain yeah niche kariye then it will zoom out more than stone what we have done is uh, intrahepatic stricture theek hai when we Let's put a cholangiogram thoda light se cholangiogram dijiye zyada mat dijiye everything spy and everything it turned out to be igg for related disease just one stricture in the left segmental duct and then it was igg4 okay so which asking something i, yeah. I forgot Kalanjagram. so there is a question from the chat box dr shrikant gopi spintroplasty in all cases colangiogram colangiogram yeah. is necessary for screen sufficient screen. ampullary opening and in this case is the spintroplasty okay upar upar jaiye thoda sa isko because there is a cbd structure at the lower end upar uh, aap so ah, basically cholangiogram daliye spintroplasty in all cases no if the pep spintrotomy is good enough it is big enough you don't need it ah, but right daliye cholangiogram like in this case is it was not a complete spintrotomy in this case screen, probably screen. balloon spintroplasty would have been screen a, an additional good thing so you need basically a i think it's behind the scope i think ampulla if you don't and try to send around with the scope you can damage the scope and yeah. that's a very expensive i'm just affair. wanted to uh, no, so it's always screen, better please. to have either a uh, bit spintrotomy or with balloon dilation a uh, big third die dal liye thoda sa that's absolutely mandatory ek baar thoda sa upar aaiye na dr navin dr navin can you uh, hear us yeah i can hear you can you yeah, hear me you are live please 
Yeah, okay. So we just uh, cannulated the, the bile duct and uh, we got the wire in. I'm just trying to get a better view of the cholangiogram so that we know what we're dealing with. I tend not to put too much of contrast because when we put a cholangioscope, uh, you get a viscous views and you will lose the views, prob uh, you know, we won't get good views. So I tend to dilute the cholangiogram, uh, the dye I mean, uh, the contrast and then we uh, I, the whole idea of putting a cholangiogram is to first important thing is to identify the duct size. What is the diameter of the duct? Um, and where is the stone and the size of the duct? You know, although we get information on the MR or other imaging, uh, but we need to get a real-time imaging to understand what exactly is going on in terms of the duct size and the stone, because that's what that's what um, decides on what kind of therapy you want to do. Um, so another thing which I notice in this case is there is a there's a um, diverticulum on the both sides, so the uh, the ampulla is in the ridge uh, between the two diverticulum, which makes it a bit more challenging. Um, one to to do a sphincterplasty or sphincterotomy also. But the thing is getting this uh, the, the spyglass as well. Uh, but there is a good enough cut uh, which was done before, so I think we should be able to get the the spy scope uh, in easily. Yeah. So can you just put some more contrast, please? I want to see the duct properly. I haven't seen the duct properly yet. See, I'm correct. Okay. So this yeah, is very keep, important. Keep in spy, please. you cannot put too much of contrast. In fact, uh, yeah, live most of the spy, we do it uh, okay, as a screen procedure. Mujhe duck ka size pata so we already know what is the bile duct diameter uh, because of the previous yeah, procedure. Screen. But ah, okay. even Pichai if you are doing screen, it at contrast, primary, contrast, don't contrast. put too much of contrast. Like, you know, even less than what he's putting. Contrast is not good in spy. You can't yeah. spe see things properly. Yeah, okay. So Stop screening. Stop putting suppose contrast. Suppose you have put contrast, you have to put more... Uh, more flush. Put, yeah. So line, yeah. flush, and then sucking out and clearing yeah. the contrast. Then you can see things properly. Yeah, I mean, I would prefer having, a, uh, you know, more better cholangiograms, but I think you can appreciate just about the scope, there is one filling defect, which looks like it's a square shape. Uh, the duct is probably about say 15 millimeters looking at the size of the scope um, so the stone probably is about 12 millimeters so we'll exchange to the spy scope now and then um, over the wire and then we'll look visualize the the duct and then we'll try to break the stone okay exchange please before we do that can i just see the, the wire kitna andar gaya ek bar dekhenge thoda upar kariye i just want to see I don't know what um, you guys uh, uh, practice is, but I normally tend not to put the wire too deep enough because I have seen cases where they puncture the, the liver capsule if the wire goes deep enough. So always I'm mindful of uh, the wire not going too deep enough. And um, uh, I, I always use a short wire system. So uh, this is something different uh, than I, what I normally use. So everything is in, in the control of the, the endoscopist uh, in terms of when you use a short wire system. I think we've got a good assistant here who is able to do it very quickly. So any uh, questions or any suggestions looking at the cholangiogram? screen kare na just just want to get the wire kitna dur hai screen ek bar okay upar chala gaya okay we'll just get this out i think it curled out Sure. Thanks. Wire probably curled up, but anyway, we are above the, the stone. We should be able to get through. Spy scope, please. Huh? Sir, is it not No, it's got a good enough opening there. Now, I think uh, the audience asked a question about this, whether we need to do a sphincterplasty every time when you put a spy scope. Uh, not necessarily. If you do a, if you have a good sphincterotomy, that should uh, take us through. The spy scope size is about 10 French, which is 3.3 millimeters. So if you can get a 10 French stent in, we should be able to get the spy scope as well. So we don't have to do a sphincterplasty every time. A good sphincterotomy should be good enough. And in this case, um, I see that there is a good enough sphincterotomy there. So I'm not going to go for, uh, I'm not going to go for any um, uh, sphincterplasty in this case. So wire so just bit of attention on the wire, please. Bit of attention on the wire, yeah, good, good. 
keep putting the tension okay i think i'm almost there can you get this five uh, views please okay eight minute huh? let me just get the the spy scope in now the challenging part with the getting the spy scope is, is with any stiff accessory is you should be working very close to the ampulla okay as you can as you have seen i just pull the scope back a little bit so that i can thread the ax the spy scope inside uh, if you have a big loop outside then uh, you may find it difficult to get in uh, you most often you will just fall back um, as you can see i think because we put more contrast you can see you know the, the screen has become more viscous okay yahan par laga dijiye na acha you just rotate it see sir yeah yeah pe laga dijiye just hold it here please Yep, absolutely. We can see the stone already there. Brilliant. Lock it, just go. Brilliant. Okay, so flush, please. Me dal dunga. Okay, so um, I, I'm sure a lot of you, you I mean, use it as a single operator. I tend to do both the uh, the movements by myself, uh, both the spy scope and the diurnoscope. I'm just flushing right now to get a better view of the of the stone. Now, is that the stone or is it a a polyp? It could be just a mucosa as well. Can you put more water? Yeah, I'm just flushing it constantly. Yeah. Kya hua? No, is that right? Uh. Thank you. So I'm just putting more flush. I think that's where you can see the stone there. Irrigation, kya ho raha hai? I'm just going above the stone to see. Doctor Navin, is it necessary to go above the stone in all cases? Not necessarily, not necessarily. But I just wanted to make sure that there is nothing else beyond it. Now, now that I know that there is a stone there, um, I just want to make sure we're not missing anything else. Because I, uh, as I said, the cholangiogram uh, pictures, I was not so confident about. Now you can see I'm actually falling back here. You can see on the my diurnoscope that I am actually falling back. So I'm just pulling back. So try to try to get into the position. I don't know whether you notice it on the diurnoscope. You, I just fallen back a little bit. I think the problem, the mistake that we probably did was we put a lot of contrast. That's why you're not able to get good views. I'm just constantly flushing it, but you can see there's a lot of viscous stuff which is in here. I don't know what, what audience would you normally uh, do suction as well. Yeah, put water and suction, and try to flush out as much contrast as you yes, can. Yes, absolutely. Put a sucker in it, isko. Siren se thoda sa sucker ye. Yeah. Siren se sucker ye. That's that probably is better. Okay. We are right at the hilum there. You can see the hilum in here. You 
Chakra see the Navi. wild card. Yeah. What if some bleeding starts at this moment? Do you have any uh, options? Do you have any remedy for stopping the bleeding? Is it possible? Say again, sorry. I didn't what get... if some bleeding starts from the wall of the CBD right now? Yeah. Most of the times it's just a, a small minor trauma that we normally see when there is a bleeding. Um, I mean, obviously, you have to, that, that is the whole point of using a guide wire over the guide wire so that you actually negotiate through the guide wire. If anything, you should not be f forcing and pushing in. Uh, you should always follow with the guide wire. As you saw earlier, that my s I was just pushing and then I got the scope. I know you, you saw the, the spy scope just fallen out, uh, fallen back rather in the di in the duodenum. So I immediately I noticed that it's just not feeding in properly. So I looked at the duodenal scope, uh, the side wing uh, view. And I noticed that the, the spice co uh, are falling off. So you should not be pushing. The first thing that we need to understand is, and the, and the second thing is um, you should be gentle. And most of the times these bleeds are self-limiting bleeds. Um, I have not encountered any uh, varicel bleeds or, um, or any significant bleed where we had to use any endotherapies inside. I think you can appreciate the stone there better now. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm just straightening the wire a little bit. Okay, so that's where I think where the where the hilum, if I can see on the fluoroscopy. So there's one stone here. There may be another big stone. This probably should be able to get it. We can get it of the stone with uh, with the balloon trawl, I would imagine. But anyway, because we are in the we are in the workshop, we will try to break this stone. Okay, wire nikal diche. So having water medium is very important for the EHL to work and uh, as Dr. Mahesh Goenka mentioned this morning, um, you should create a, uh, a bubble there uh, with which the stone breaks. So always try to get the stone in the nice uh, center of the screen. Do you think while breaking the stone, the stone will move into absolutely. the intrahepatic duct? Intrahepatics, yes, that's a possibility. That's absolutely is, is a strong possibility. Um, and these kind of small stones are always notorious because uh, they're trying to migrate. All these mobile stones are very, very challenging to take out compared to an impacted stone. Um, because whenever you touch with the, with the EHL probe or the laser, they keep uh, floating around and you won't be able to get a good uh, opposition onto the, onto the stone. So that is always uh, the problem with the mobile stones. But most of the times, mobile stones, you should be able to take it out with, uh, with the standard uh, balloons, uh, balloons uh, uh, trolls or through the basket. If there are bigger stones, rather than trying from the center, it may be always worth trying from the edges and then breaking the, uh, like peeling it off and then try to go at the center afterwards. But these mobile stones, I tend to hit at the center itself because you won't be able to get any opposition onto the, onto the edges because you're going to hit the, the mucosa. The, the challenge which I uh, f uh, face when we're getting the, any accessories, whether it's a spy bite biopsy or snare or the EHL, is right at the, at the bridge. Um, always I find it very challenging to get the the accessories through the through the uh, through the bridge so any tricks uh, to take the accessories out if it is getting uh, impacted yeah. at the two things which i tend to do one is relax the bridge as much as possible be very close to the ampulla so that there is so that the acute bend is is minimized that's number one. Number two is sometimes if it doesn't work, you have no other choice of bringing the, um, the, the spice scope out into the ampulla uh, th uh, and then feeding it, getting this, the, the accessory to the edge of the spice scope and then, um, and then going in. So those are only two options that I feel. I don't know if uh, any other experts have any other advices on it. Sometimes you uh, close and uh, open and close, open and close the biopsy forcep. It right. will uh, move ahead. Okay. You mean in the in the channel itself, to opening and closing? Yes, yes, slowly. You you don't push while opening and closing. Right. Open, close, and then just 
push a little bit okay i'm just trying to get the opposition of this uh so dr navin you are using ehl or laser ehl ehl any difference between uh, using ehl and laser the method technique um i actually use both of them in terms of technique wise um the eh ehl you just don't have to um hit the the stone you just have to be very close to the stone uh with the laser you tend you would like to be more closer to the stone and almost like opposing it in, inside the ready ready to fire what settings we got now low 3 yeah okay Is perfect do you think that apnea will help in this yeah absolutely that definitely will help because as you can see with even minor movements of his breathing you can see there's a significant uh change in the views that we having in the spice scope so can anesthetist do some apnea for a moment see uh the difficulty i think is because the stone is small yes and it has already been in intrahepatic duct so i think that's that's the problem over here yeah. if it is large impact stone probably that we don't have this kind of moments yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely i think we already broke the stone yeah, i think so it's done let me just flush a little bit and then see So, Doctor Navin, what are the uh, uh, settings of the EHL machine you have kept to break the stone? It broke very easily. So, can you uh, enlighten us on that? Yeah, we put a setting of three uh, joules, uh, three pulses. I mean, sorry, and low power. And the trick is, don't keep pressing on it. You know, you had to give some time between the between the pulses. You are creating crater-like thing over there. Yeah, that's right. I think it already made pieces, uh, and you know, one of the pieces I'm trying to break it even further. You can see the two pieces already there. Yeah. Just pulling back the scope a little bit to see, get a better view. It's already broken to pieces. To be honest, it's already broken into pieces. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's done. I think. Yep. You can just retrieve the stone fragments. So I just used uh, low low pulse, um, and then uh, uh, three three pulse and a low uh, low power. So most of the times it should be fine. But uh, yesterday uh, I happened to do a two and a half centimeter uh, stone. Yeah, you can see it's nicely broken now. You can see the shaved parts of the stone as well. Yes. Sir. you can see now i just uh, use another pulse you can see it's actually uh, shaved in, shaving into the into the pieces so yesterday there was a 2 and 1/2 cm stone which i had to break but uh, it was a very hard stone and uh, i i had to go with the with the medium settings on the power and uh, pulses uh, i had to go around 15 but generally 5 to 10 should be enough uh, to break the stones at a at a low to medium power how how, how many shocks can you give with one probe Yeah, so you, you can go even up to thousand shocks that if you want to. But as I said, if it is not working in five six shocks, then that means you have to reassess why it is not working. Uh, sir, yeah, that is Doctor Vinit. Uh, you want to ask sir, some question? Uh, supposingly, the stone while flushing and all this, uh, the CBD, the stone goes intrahepatic. Then what? What we have to do in that situation? Yeah, if it goes intrahepatic, it gets jammed. So you can still there is nothing to worry about it. um you can still get those stones in by using a spice uh, you know ehl you can still use it it's say it is going to be like a ball and cage so if the cage is big enough uh, it, it, sorry it is tight enough then the ball will go and stuck get stuck into the cage so you can go with the spice scope and then you can break it that should not you be a problem you can break it as well as you can use a spy basket spy basket as well absolutely absolutely we can use both of them i think we're done here i think with the stone seems to have broken enough we should be able to take it out with the with the basket or the balloon what do you what do you guys say
Agree? Yeah, doctor. Oh, sorry, Dr. Navin, uh, there is a one uh, question from yeah. Dr. Manas Vaisnav. Any yeah. standard setting recommended for EHL? I would say put the pulses at 5 and then use a low power to start with. If you have a very big hard stone, then you can gra gradually go up um, to even 15. Uh, the settings there on the EHL says you can go even up to 30. Uh, but I think 15 sh uh, is good enough. We should be able to break the stones with uh, with the 15 settings. When the EHL, when I um, came into the market, um, I, I was in uh, UK in uh, Liverpool. I was was one of the first European centers which did uh, trials on EHL versus uh, versus uh, laser. Uh, we started uh, this in 2007 when it actually the spy scope uh, the the legacy was there. And um, I remember the, the views that I had at the time were just horrible views. But, um, but as uh, we got into the, uh, into the DS1, the images were, start, were much better. Uh, and uh, we initially started using laser, uh, but afterwards we switched to, sorry, to a EHL. Later we switched to... Later so we switched Naveen, to the... Uh, Dr. Naveen, is this another stone? Yeah, there's another stone which I'm breaking. Okay. This is the one impacted which was the culprit. Yeah, probably. You're right. Because as I'm coming down, I can see this kind of more uh, stones. So that's why I'm just trying to break this stone as well. This seems to be a slightly harder stone. Can you go up to five, please, in the pulses? I think this is also broken now. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Navin, for nice demonstration of uh, uh, EHL guided lithotripsy of CBD stones. Now again, we will switch over to uh, OT2 of Noble Gastro Hospital for live demonstration of another third case. Uh, now, sorry, can I show it here? Just so, sorry to interrupt. You can see those layers over there, isn't it? In the on the uh, can you see the screen? You're still on the you're still on with us. With you, yeah. You can see the layers of the stone. You can see how nicely it is broken because you can see all the layers there. Okay, that's that actually gives a satisfaction that we are able to break to the center of the of the stone. So, so Doctor Navin, uh, once you remove these stones through the basket, no? Yeah. Uh, please convey it to Doctor Samir. So we'll sh uh, switch over again to OT1. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. In the meantime, we'll start with OT2. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So uh, okay. here Nikhal now Nikhal. we'll starting another case we'll by Dr. Wire, Mukesh Kala. This gentleman is 39 year wire old male. Wire Initially he presented wire with cholelithiasis, cholelithiasis with obstructive jaundice. So uh, he underwent ERCP in uh, uh, May of uh, uh, 2022. Oh, at the time of ERCP probably the CBD stone was passed off and no stones were removed and uh, uh, CBD stent was placed. He underwent cholecystectomy in June 2020. Now, when he came back for CBD stent removal, uh, cholangiogram revealed multiple filling defect in CBD as well as cystic duct stump. So, around 20 stones were removed after the stent removal, and uh, uh, but uh, the cystic duct stom uh, stones could not be removed. So the plan is cholangioscopy guided uh, cystic duct calculi removal by spy basket. So over to Dr. Mukesh Kala in OT2. Yeah, hi. Hello, I Hello. heard uh, delay and sorry about there please. in the hall. OT view. Hi, hi. Hi, hi we are uh, seeing you. Uh, we are listening. OT view. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we have Kamal and Manish who are helping me and we have uh, Nero from uh, uh, Quanta laser and Rajesh from EHL. 
सो योगेश हैज़ बीन काइंड एनफ नॉट टू गिव मी अ लार्ज स्टोन बट ऑल स्मॉल स्टोन इन सिस्टिक डक्ट सो दी पर्पज आवर बिकॉज दिस इज अ लर्निंग एरिया हेयर फॉर अस आई वुड लाइक योर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑन दी लेजर एज वेल बिकॉज यू जस्ट सीन दी ई एच एल कॉन्ट्रास्ट कर लो कॉन्ट्रास्ट एल कॉन्ट्रास्ट सोमिल सोमिल आजम हाँ डाल 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 वी टेक अ कोलेनियोग्राम फर्स्ट हाँ डालो डालो सी एम सी एम वेर इज सी एम पेडल देखा गिव मी सी एम पेडल और somebody will just shoot yeah. from there there are multiple small stones in the lower end of common bile duct so nile i would yeah. like your comments on this because uh, the proper uh, opacification of cystic duct in these situations is very important there are people yes. who do cases in supine some people will be happy doing in prone like i do it in uh, left little position and uh, as and when there is a overlap of cystic duct over the common bile duct i request my assistant to take the patient into semi prone or semi supine position to see dikhao dikhao another thing you can do is you can move your iitv also yeah uh, so i do Pulio. it in prone uh, but i Pulio. think any pluron rakho bhi contrast cell pluron please wonderful up contrast hello ha dal 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 floro 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 dikhao dikhao floro dikhao floro dikhao floro dikhao floro dikhao floro dikhao to me it looks see. like that cystic duct is very uh, neatly cut we we had not a picture of iit it is still ha now it is okay So, Saurabh and Nilay, can you guide me on this? Uh, this I mean, you guys picture. can see the cystic duct. Yeah. Or we can do sir. I can collagen. see. Yeah. It yeah. is posteriorly, and there is a small, uh, yeah, stump small stone going yeah. towards the, uh, yes. uh, spine, yes. and probably there is a stone struck there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You want collagen? हाँ अब ठीक है अपन collagen उसको भी डाल लेते हैं सीधा. So here the purpose, as in the last case. we had a migrated small stone in the common bile duct from the cystic duct we went inside the cystic duct till the end of it we were against the wall of uh, the uh, cystic duct and we ensured that cystic duct was clean then we came back and we went right up to the hilum and ensured that the hilum was clean as well so i mean uh, i hope that patient will do well because now there is no stone we were lucky that uh, we didn't need to struggle too much in the cystic duct manipulation and so we we'll did that's best job of holding the stone with the spy for uh, i mean a basket and brought that stone out so here i will again take i mean uh, uh, nile i mean when you you when you are doing a spy cholangoscopy it's a single operator or you use assistant i, I do single op operator all right all right so i don't know last 4 years 5 years since 2017 I am in a habit of using my assistant for uh, the cholangoscopy, yeah, which gives I me liberty. I think it's also a good idea. I am going to explore it now. Yeah, because it gives me liberty to. I mean, I keep the laser laser pedal in my hand. I keep the irrigation pedal in my hand. So I mean, uh, there less multitasking while the procedure is being done. But sir, Nilay sir, when you are doing single handedly, you used to fix a uh, right left wheel of cholangoscope or uh, once yeah, you yeah, have changed. Fix, fix the cholangoscope. This will reduce the, the durability of cholangoscope or not? Sorry. Will this reduce the durability of cholangoscope? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's but. Sovin, Doctor yes. Sovin, Sandeep here. Sir, sir. Uh, see, when we are doing uh, the idea is to do cholangoscope, do you really need to put contrast? To put? Yeah, yeah. That's a wonderful contrast. question. so i presume you are asking me a question that when you are going inside the common bile duct then what's the point in uh, pushing contrast because that might create difficulty in visualization of the common bile duct through a cholangoscope right yes see i mean uh, uh, road it's better to have a road map and uh, i mean as uh, dr navin was telling us that when he is using 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1 uh, diluted uh, contrast for the job because it makes the task difficult yeah like it it does it does case. it does so we will go in first to the hilum 
ensure that uh, we've reached uh, seen the common bile duct properly then we'll come back see ya we'll explore the location of the cystic duct and uh, if we can go straight we go straight with the cholangioscope itself if we are not able to go straight then we'll use a guide wire to negotiate the cholangioscope inside the i can be here is a cystic duct opening yes so now we have two openings here left side uh, probably appears like a cystic duct cm cm dikho it may be i know uh sahi hai you you may be right reached hmm. so as we in a gj as we see afferent and efferent loop so the area from which the bile is draining is usually the common bile duct and the area from which the bile doesn't drain is the cystic duct in cholangioscopy thoda move karna Now I'll go inside. Yes, okay. wonderful. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So this is the hilum. So this beautiful picture of the hilum. So I think things appear good. Yes, so I'll sir. just have a inspection. Do a pan cholangioscopy as we do with spiral. We call it pan enteroscopy. Let's do a pan cholangioscopy first. So there's the end on uh, appearances. The mucosa looks healthy. We have classification of identifying the mucosal areas in the cholangio uh, uh, cholangioscopy, which people say, as Dr. Goenka had uh, presented in his talk. that the visual impression is as good as uh, the biopsy and uh, crush cytology so things are looking okay here for us there were yes, small sir. stones in the common bile duct earlier which we have which we have already removed so the aim now is to explore the location of uh, cystic duct go inside the cystic duct and see if there are remnant stones we will try and bring them out as well ha ollo oh dekho I don't think this is cystic duct. This is bifurcation towards right side. I think maybe entry and posterior. Ah, uh, we want to go this side. Yeah, let's see. Okay, let's see. Oh, we can we have, have proper visualization. Probably patient had a stent inside, so some amount of erythema is because of that stent there. Right, right. I'm slowly. One more see, I'm see. Now, 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 we did a cholangiogram and as per our cholangiogram we should get our cystic duct somewhere around in this place suction karna hai ek jana suction karo iska laga nahi now there two important things one is irrigation so what i personally do that while you are irrigating these patients as we all know that uh, cholangioscopy has a 3.4% incidence of uh, cholangitis and probably this normal spleen uh, suction na irrigation may be one of the responsible causes so what i personally do is to keep it at the lowest possible flows no. and when you have a large stone and when you are doing a ehl or a laser lithotripsy for large stones then a lot of water gets flushed and these patients are prone to get aspiration yeah, so i don't do it in a intubation uh, status we just do it with a propofol anesthesia so i would come in between and uh, make sure that there is not enough uh, water in the stomach which causes aspiration suction 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 on ha tumhe na suction karna hai apne haath se kar lo chaho to na 20 cc ki syringe leke bhi kar sakte ho reason okay. is clear near we are coming out yes ab yeah we'll try and find this, out this yes, one, yes, one, yes, one, yes, one. yes 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 ab from I will ask Somil to Done. manipulate and go inside the cystic duct. I think this is a cystic duct, and we'll try and correlate. One, there are two ways of saying uh, that we are in a cystic duct. We are not seeing the hilum. We go and and uh, stand against the wall of a cystic duct because this is a post coli status. Huge. Karo stain lumen. Abhi sir, range khatam ho gaya. Range khatam ho gaya. Push push karna. Rapi chaenge. Lumen dekhenge, fir jaenge. Abhi aap karo. Uh, you fallen out. Uh, that, that, that's that's the place we need to go. Are we right, Karo? That's the that maximum right. Okay, you have to change it. Ah. Uh. Uh. Another uh, thing which uh, I uh, I try to don't use the shaft too much when you're doing a la large laser lithotripsy. I use up and down knob to go close and come little away from the stone. 
which reduces ah, no. the stress on the cystic duct, uh, on the shaft of the cholangioscope. I think cystic duct appears empty. Gumao. So the whole game is in hand of Somil right now. Ah, ah this is I stone. think there is a small stone, is it? Yes. Or is this, this a bubble? Is, no, 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 this is stones. Leo? Is it this? Yes, you can take... Uh, basket? Uh, spy basket. Uh, uh, spy basket. Spy basket, yes. Uh, take a spy basket, we'll try and get it out. Yes. Hold it. Yes. Give it to me. And another trick is that if I can go beyond the stone, I will keep flushing and uh, I will get this stone towards the common bile duct. So I think I've gone deep inside and there's the end of it, cystic duct. Is it clearly visible in the hall? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, 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 okay. So I have deliberately gone beyond it. I want to facilitate uh, Somil's uh, ease of movement for using the spy basket. So, sir, will you be using a spy basket or you are just uh, flushing and trying to remove it through the cystic duct? Like, see, if it's a small stone, it will just drop into the common bile duct. And if we can't do it, our purpose is to ensure that uh, this patient stays free of stones now because he has yes. already had... Uh, two ERCP is one prior and yeah. one later. Yes. Dallo. You are finding it difficult? Now, uh, now uh, this is a challenge. See him, dikhao. See him, dikhao. See him, dikhao. Fluoro. Fluoro, dikhao. Fluoro, dikhao. Fluoro, dikhao. Please. Ah. So what happens that when you are on a curve, then taking out accessory out of the 1.2 mm channel of the, uh, the uh, cholangioscope is a problem. So I will straighten up the my scope. Now I have straightened up my scope. I hope this will facilitate easy movement of the. Up karo. Are? It's not coming. Now. 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 Try it. Try it. We are taking help of Kamal. I have straightened it. I have straightened it. If it doesn't come still, then I will have to come out. Chait gaya na? Gaya? I think ERCPs are impossible you without uh, efficient uh, assistance. You can see like on that. what we can you do. Can see in I, okay. You come out. Otherwise you can see. I will, I will, I will. Now So this is a challenge. Ah, no this is a challenge with the... Now, now, ah, yes, no basket it is, is now out. I think just take it so I will go back in again. So normally what I do, I go to the hilum, straighten my scope and then I ask my assistant or my colleague to take out the accessory out. See, these were the stones earlier which were removed. Now we'll have to look for the cystic duct again. Section. Yeah, there, there, there. Go in there. Go in there. I will manipulate. Yes. So this is like selective uh, introduction of the scope inside the, you are able to go in? Ah, yes. Go open, open. Open better. Yeah, open. Wonderful. Very nice. So I will use my up and down knob to go close or to go away from the stone instead of manipulating. Ah, yeah, wonderful. Ah, uh, Somil is too good at holding the stones. He pricks them up very well. Nice one. So I think he, he held it. We saw the end of the cystic duct and we were able to take it out. Really, chhoddo. Release, release. Chhoddo. Basket nikallo. So we've seen till the hilum it was okay. If you want, we can go back to cystic duct and see the end of it and uh, ensure that there are no stones, no further stones inside. So wonderful equipment actually. So it gives us great liberty and with this DS2 thing, na, the image is so good. Yes, sir. So, um, uh, Nilay and Saurabh, I mean, what's your experience with direct cholangioscopy? 
and do you have experience with uh, the Olympus uh, col uh, new cholangioscope, the catheter based uh, new cholangioscope which <coughs> they have? Uh, yes, Saurabh can answer. This is on, yes. So I think direct cholangioscopy is, uh, is one more all are aware, is fairly technically challenging yeah, and uh, pediatric Basket. endoscopes can be Basket used, Basket but does okay. require the bile duct to be dilated enough for it to accommodate the scope, number one. I have personally used in a couple of patients which had a fistula uh, into the duodenum first part where we have used a pediatric scope for stent retrieval. Uh, but uh, by and large, uh, going through D2, going through the ampulla, getting it up is, is a very daunting Line task with the currently available instruments. Okay. Uh, the Olympus probe has, does not have a high quality image and uh, therefore it's never gained popularity and I've not personally used it. Yeah, and, and to my knowledge, Saurabh, it is only uh, right-left movement. It doesn't have up-down movement. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a bronchoscope. Nilay, yeah, do you have any uh, experience about double bending scope for uh, direct cholangioscopy? Dr. Mehta. Nilay is left. Ah, okay, okay. Saurabh? Yeah, Dr. Mehta is not here. He has to leave. So, so no, no, no. It's, I think it's all experimental at this point. I haven't yeah. personally uh, touched Open. it. Open. Mm, we are not looking at You are not there? Ah. Chalo. Ah, Ab dekho, aage, hold it. Hold it. I'll come back. I will come now, back. Uh, now you can hold it. So, so Dr. Kala, you're very nicely demonstrating the use of spy basket. Ah, ab hold, hold. Most uh, routine ERCP aage, aage, aage. doctors, the question is, you know, a standard basket would sort of be doing similar uh, tricks and maneuvers for retrieval of stones. Yes. Do you feel like spy basket has a certain advantage in any particular situations Keep over a standard uh, basket through fluoroscopy guided uh, uh, access? Yes. I mean, um, sort of like um, those uh, intrahepatic stones, those stones at the end of it, because you need to bring them out with a norm, um, under the vision then you need a spy basket. So spy basket, in my opinion, is more useful while retrieving our, I mean, uh, old stand which has migrated in. It can be of use there. But the best use is for cystic duct, of course. Then the second best use is uh, intrahepatic stones. I think we have done it uh, and it's almost uh, clean now. So just for the I'm knowledge sorry, of uh, no. the uh, delegates in the meeting, I think I hope this thing is done. Yeah, it's all clean yeah. now. It's absolutely clean now. No, it's wonderful. I think it's uh, yeah. This is the hilum, and there is no stone, so it's yeah, like. Okay. Yeah, I was also going to talk about uh, <laughs> just <laughs> a little point about scapuloplasty or sphincteroplasty prior to spy. Uh, yeah, sphincteroplasty. Yeah, I uh, I personally do recommend putting it over a guide wire or a freehand after a papilloplasty is performed because we've See, had a case of perforation when there was a narrow distal bile duct and we were trying to manipulate it freehand. So that's that's been uh, after that uh, episode, uh, we've decided to absolutely do papilloplasty or sphincteroplasty. Even if it's a stricture case, we do a short papilloplasty small and then well, proceed with the spy advancement if it's freehand. Yeah. Saurabh, I, um, uh, I mean... Uh, we have had a long experience with this cholangioscopy now. We are heading close to 200 patients. We have always struggled when there wasn't any sphincteroplasty done. Though I am not saying that for small stones or cystic duct small stones, we need to do a sphincteroplasty. Adequate sphincterotomy is good. But yes, if you are dealing with a large stone, which is like 2.5 centimeters and all, I always do sphincteroplasty for, as I said earlier, for two good reasons. One, it saves my scope. It saves uh, injury to the common bile duct through my scope and, and it facilitates control. easy passage of fragments which we have done already. So I would probably recommend at least 12 to 15 mm of uh, sphincteroplasty if you're dealing with a stone which is 2 centimeters and above. Yeah, I, I think the only challenge lies in the water not staying because it all flows out and then can be a problem. Yes, but yes, yes. That's quite a valid point. I mean, though I have not encountered, but when you visit no. literature, they say that, I mean, the flushing, the, it doesn't hold the water inside the common bile duct when ah. you have a wide sphincterotomy. Dr. Mukesh, excellent demonstrations. You are working patiently on patient's biliary tree, but we are running short of the time by 45 minutes. Okay. Can we switch over to the next session? All right. Thank you. Bye, thanks. Thank you, everyone. We Thank you very much. We this session, but we, to me, the... Uh, sort of...
Sorry, yes. Saurabh? Yes, 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 sir. Are we there or we are gone? We are there. I just wanted to take two extra minutes if you have. Yes, you, you can go ahead. Yeah. Camera wale ko bulana jara. Focus karne ke liye kena. Isko idhar. So while uh, Somil will be, usko aisi kar le. Stand kyu phal tu so kharaab kare. I just wanted to show you something about this uh, laser lithotripsy machine as well, and how best we can utilize this machine for fragmentation. Sir, uh, sir just a minute, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there is one more case we have to demonstrate on laser in okay. afternoon. Okay. So we can do so it there. At okay. At that time we can do that, sir. Right, 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 Yogesh. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you. Give me spring. Thank so you, sir. For CBD stone, I think ERCP is the first treatment of choice, but all the instrument has its own limitations. Gazettes and any procedure has its own limitations, and person has also its own his or her own limitations. So one thing one should not hesitate to go to the counterpart. From physician to surgeon, and same way from surgeon to physician, Achha. rather than debating. Good, yeah. And we should always complementary to it. Should be always be complementary to each other. That's what I conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you, moderators. We are very encouraging uh, online presence. There are three hundred and twenty participants all night right now. So, please start the next session. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Mukesh Kala and Dr. Naveen Pulavrapu for the excellent, marvelous and challenging live demonstration. Move to the next. We have a debate and uh, for that I would like to request uh, reputed Dr. Saurabh Mukhevar, gastroenterologist. At